Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about macular degeneration. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to comment down below. I really appreciate it reading your comments. Also, check out ninjanerd.org where you can get notes and illustrations for all of our lectures here on YouTube. Macular degeneration. This is age-related macular degeneration. It's also commonly referred to as AMD or ARMD. The macular degeneration is a degenerative eye disease that we have a loss of our focal center vision. Our central vision is lost. And how does that happen? What occurs? So we have our eyeball here, right? And while we're looking at our eyeball, just want you to orient yourself with the drawing here. I put them in color order so you guys can get an idea. Our cornea is this green portion out here with our iris, which is our colored pigmented of our eye. The opening between the iris is our pupil. As the light travels through, it goes through our lens. And then it hits the back here, this pink portion, which is our retina. And as that light travels through and hits our retina, that sends the signal down the optic nerve here to our brain and tells us what we're seeing, right? But within the retina, we have an area that's kind of like the bullseye of vision, and that's our macula, our macula lutea. And our macula is our high concentration of cones. So when we're talking about macular degeneration, we're, we're specifically talking about the macula and the effect of the macula degenerating or having some issue, and then that's causing a problem with our central vision. And with this, what we're mainly focusing on is how is the macula affected? And there's two different types in how it can be affected. There's a dry version and a wet version. And there's also different stages within macular degeneration, but we're just going to specifically talk about macular degeneration and then dry and wet. So this nice concentration area here of our macula, our bullseye, can be affected in two ways. The dry version is when we have these drusen proteins that accumulate. So over here on this little diagram here, we have our sclera, our choroid, which is this purple, this Brooks membrane, and then we have our retina. And what happens is these pr proteins can get deposited within here. And it separates or creates a separation between the choroid, which is our vascularized area that supplies vascularization and helps our retina get nice um, blood flow through it and perfusion. And these proteins separate, or they, they are in between the choroid and the retina here. And because of that drusen protein accumulation, we get retinal atrophy, or we have a disruption within that vascularization of the retina. Because of that, we can get degeneration. On the other side of this, we have the wet. And the wet version is this choroid, right? This layer right here starts to produce new blood vessels because it wants to keep vascularizing, it wants to keep perfusing our retina. But what happens is those new blood vessels are thin, they're weak, and they have a the potential to leak. And when they leak, they can leak out things like blood, they can leak out things like fluid, and because of that leak of blood or fluid, we get a separation of the macula, and then we have potential scarring, and that can also cause degeneration or problems with our vision. So macular degeneration is an effect on the macular, whether it's a dry from the proteins accumulating or fluid or blood in the wet version. And let's talk about the difference between dry and wet, how they occur, and how they can affect our patients. So I have a little dry versus wet differential right here for us to look at. So we can just get an idea of what the difference is between dry macular degeneration and wet. So dry is atrophic, like we talked about before. It's a decrease in that perfusion to the retina. So that atrophic is the most common, and it's also the slower, potentially older generation. So what we're talking about here again is when we have that retinal atrophy, that slower perfusion over time, and that ischemia or atrophy to the retina, sometimes patients don't notice it right away because it's a slow change in their vision. So it's something that they think is just maybe, I'm getting older, so my vision's getting worse. And they're not getting that true sense that maybe this is something else going on. It's not just the aging, aging process. So because of it being the most common, it's also slower and older. There is the ischemia or the atrophy of the macula, which can be from those drusen proteins accumulating, causing a blockage in that microvasculature. Because of that deposit, there is a between, like we said before, that Brooke membrane and the retinal pigmented epithelial. We are creating a separation from that, and we're not getting that signal sent down our optic nerve to our brain, and then we're having some issues with our central vision. The wet version, let's talk about it one more time, is also known as exudative. Dry can be also referred to as non-exudative, but wet 
is less common and it's actually very fast and it can occur at any age. So it doesn't have to do with somebody who's older. This has to do with that abnormal growth of new blood vessels or that neovascularization. And they tend to be thin and tend to be weak and they tend to leak that fluid and blood. And because of that, it collects under our macula and it can cause that scar or that visual distortion. Because of this, again, you can have a problem with your vision. This occurs a lot faster at any age. This occurs slower and over time. But let's talk about what the risk factors are and how we can possibly prevent this in our patients. All right, engineer. So let's talk about the risk factors and ways that we can possibly prevent macular degeneration from occurring. Some of the risk factors are the things that we commonly refer to as the smoking and the hypertension, right? And these are things that hopefully we can modify and change and then cut down on our risk factor of macular degeneration. We also have poor intake, which has to do with certain vitamins that, and supplements that are really important to help with eye health. But the two that we can't really modify are our age and our family history. So if you have a family history of macular degeneration, you might wanna be you know, keeping this on your radar and checking out with your eye doctor. But the prevention is the biggest thing here because if we can catch it early enough, we can hopefully just help slow the progression of it. So the biggest thing again, stop smoking, right? We wanna increase our supplements. Like I said, there's various types of supplements or vitamins that you can take, check with your healthcare provider. But there's also um, specific eye vitamins that we can get as well. There's injections and laser therapy that are particularly aimed at wet macular degeneration. So if you are diagnosed with a form of wet macular degeneration, you can get laser surgery, which we'll talk about in a little bit, laser therapy, and you can also get the injections that'll help with that as well. And then our annual eye exams are really important to help us identify if there is a decline in our vision. But when we assess our patient, what we're looking at are signs and symptoms of macular degeneration. And the two biggest ones are the blurry central vision, which is right in the middle, which is gonna cause our issues with our reading, our driving, our writing, the eating, the normal activities of daily living and blurry faces for people. Because you wanna think that the center of your vision is where you're using to focus, right? But there's also a very big indicator of macular degeneration, which is called metamorphopsia. I think it's like my favorite word right now, metamorphopsia. It sounds like a Harry Potter spell. But this is where we use the Amsler chart and it's the chart that looks like grid paper and you can give it to your patient. And metamorphopsia means distortion essentially. So it's a whole sense of paper where all these lines, they should be straight. But what happens is you get this vision that has bends in it, right? So it's not looking straight, it looks distorted, it looks warped, and that's our vision of metamorphopsia. So now what we're looking at here is what is going on with our patient? They're having troubles with their central vision, but they're also having this distortion. So because of this, we may think, hmm, my patient might have macular degeneration. I'm gonna refer to the doctor or tell the doctor what's going on, and they can get diagnosed with it. And there's two ways that they diagnose. Mainly it's the fundoscopy, but there's two ways we can at least be like, hey, there's something going on. So the fluorescein dye, which is what we put some dye in so we can view the blood vessels at the back of the eye, and that can tell us if they're leaking or having any fluids that are coming out of them. But we also have the fundoscopy, which is our ability to view the back of the eye so that we can really look at the retina and we can look at the macula and we can look at the optic disc and really get a nice close look at them to see and assess what's going on with them and diagnose the type of macular degeneration they have. But the last thing we gotta do to wrap it up is take care of our patient. What interventions are we gonna include for our patients? All right, so we have our patient that has potentially been diagnosed with either wet or dry macular degeneration and we're gonna wanna teach them ways that they can hopefully slow this progression, keep their independence, and more importantly, just take care of their eyes and the vision that they have left. So again, the goal is just to slow that progression and keep their independence. Ways that we can keep an eye on them, again, is those, those eye checks, those eye exams, the visual acuity, using the Snell and the Rosenbaum to make sure that we're keeping an eye on how their vision is progressing or declining. We also wanna give them modifications. So give them interventions and modifications to things that they can do daily, like improve lighting within the house, the large print reading material, glasses that they need to be wearing. And again, I earlier said, if they have some form of wet macular degeneration, there are other therapies that we can include, like laser therapy, which is a laser that they use to go in and seal those vessels that are leaking, that hopefully can preserve the macula. And then there's oscular, ocular injections, which will inhibit new growth, the neovasculature that it grows. We can put medication in and hopefully decline or stop that so that we can, again, preserve our macula. 
With that being said, Ninja Nerds, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time.